Hey, what's up? We're back. The relentless march of otaku consumerism continues, uh, as you see behind us. We already have a, a pretty big pile, but as I said, that's that's really just a warm up. That's really just a warm up. Oh, where do I even begin with this? Um, I guess here is another nundroid. It's Sakuya, the perfectly elegant maid. Uh, that works at the Scarlet, Scarlet Devil Mansion. This is another Toho Nendroid that I really wanted, but had never gotten. She comes with knives, of course, and a teapot, and no smiling faces. Well, there's one where she has her eyes closed and she's kind of smirking. So that's good. It goes well with patchouli. <clears throat> um, I got this gigantic book. It is the Shiro Bako design notes, the production notes. So this is something they put out um, usually in fairly limited quantities for uh, a wide variety of shows. Um, any show that kind of could be called a success, I think, has this document produced for it as part of its kind of merchandising and stuff. And and it's kind of like I want I don't want to say that it's easy for them to make this. But they're essentially getting a lot of mileage out of things that have to exist for the show already. Um, so it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, it's basically all of the documents and stuff that were produced by the show in order to make the show. And if you've watched Shirobako, you, you probably have a good understanding of what kind of stuff I mean. Uh, Shirobako, of course, being an anime about making anime, and, and a fantastic anime, too. It's, it's one that I really would recommend to anyone and everyone who has any interest in anime as a medium. This is cool. On the back, it has um, a production chart. So this is something that you see quite, in, quite often in the show, or, or is referred to in the show. Uh, so... Um, Going down the left-hand column, we have the dates, um, the, the 20, let's see, uh, I'm not quite sure how this works, it like counts down from 26 days, and then it goes up, oh wait, no, these are weeks, I'm sorry, the 26th week before and the 24th week afterwards, um, and then... It's like each episode along the top, uh, and then it shows who's doing various roles, um, and then going down the column, you then see what stage of production it should be at on each day. So this is a way that a lot of the characters in the show, and I would assume thus also people in real life, uh, maybe this is the one for the actual show. So yeah, I was really cool, like, really, really uh, excited to see this. I thought it would be really cool, given that it is a show about making anime, so that, like, the production aspects of the production notes would be highlighted. So it'll have stuff like character references. So these are actually the, the character references for the characters in the show within a show that they're making in Shiro Bako. Um, so I don't know if those character references were... <laughs> Actual character references for the segments that they actually animated of this show in Shirobako, or if they're the character references that they showed in Shirobako, uh, that might be the same character references, I guess, because why not? Um, this is cool. This is like a bunch of fictional books and stuff that they created for the show uh, that they knew they would be showing at some point. Uh, here's the bajillion sketches and 3D models and stuff of, of settings that they were using. Here's a bunch more setting work, um, backgrounds and stuff. This is the bar that they hang out at sometimes. Uh, oh my god, that's so cool. Here we have character designs. Sugoi, great, great. Um, other stuff. Interviews with people involved, staff and cast. Uh, oh, they even have, like, the, the CG penguins from when the, the girls working at the CG company that they showed as, like, another project. Oh, they've got the, the seven, seven lucky heroes or whatever it's called. Their, their first anime, anime, the, the anime they made in high school. 
I, I flipped through that page, but... Oh, man, look at this. They've got bags. Oh, over here, they've got bags. All the bags that the characters use. It's hard to show line art on the camera, because it gets a little blurry, and then you can't see at all what I'm talking about. But yeah, like, all of the equipment, it has to be consistent, right? Like, that... If you show somebody's laptop in one scene, and then you show them working on their laptop in another scene, even if you see like a different angle of it, it has to be consistent. So what they do is they they just draw it from a whole bunch of angles the first time they just the design it, and then oh, this is the the height chart. Oh, okay, we're gonna talk too much about this. It's so cool. I'm so glad it comes. I got this on another racket. Oh. Oh, what else we got? I got this. This is like a hand lotion they were demoing that was on sale. It's really good. Skin Serum Moisture. Okay. Uh, I got... This is a ticket to the Museum of Kyoto, and this is a ticket to the Asano exhibit that I mentioned before. My, this was mine. I bent it, so my friend gave me his. I was like, oh, that's nice. Um, this is the Kantoku 15th Anniversary Memorial Art Book. Um, Kantoku been out here drawing for 15 years. It's pretty cool. He's uh, probably one of the most popular booths at Comic Cat. His line is often one of the longest that I've seen for an independent artist. He's done character designs for a bunch of stuff. Um, he's <laughs> become a meme among my friends for his tubular thighs. He's referred to as struck tube sometimes. Um, but I really like his work. I think uh, what impresses me the most is the detail he puts into fabrics. This is like a pretty common thing that he's praised for is his amazing check work. Um, I'm trying to find a good example here. Uh, so like something like this, they're in Yukata, and then all of the, the folds and the, the, the flexing and the strain and stuff in the fabric is captured like very, very realistically. Um, and then his background stuff, I think his backgrounds are drawn really beautifully too. So it's a nice little collection, a lot of like famous images. A lot of uh, characters he's designed that have become really popular. In the old channel, I think the header image was a Kantoku image that I put into black and white for some reason. I don't really remember why. I, I kind of remember making the header image and then being like, well, I can always change it later, and then I just never changed again. Uh, this is uh, Hana to Chidori. Uh, nan Nanoha to Chidori. Uh, oh yeah. What? They didn't write the whole, her whole name on the cover? Okay, anyways. <laughs> um, this is a Yuri series I've been reading that I quite liked. I picked up the first volume of a bunch of Yuri, Yuri series. Just, just to, just to, for the culture, I guess. I don't know. Um, not necessarily intending on buying all of them. But just wanting like a little something to show for it. This is a really nice series. I, I've been very, very, very happy with this one. Um, yeah. Now everyone should read this. We'll, we'll start reading it on the channel. Now that we're back to reading manga. Or not now, but soon we'll be back to reading manga. I got more candy. These are the little packaged uh, chocolate macadamia and chocolate almonds. Really good. Uh, I got this. This is yet another Yuri series that I was like, I'll just buy the first volume, you know, just to support it. Just an ad in here. I don't need that. Uh, this is one about two mangaka that are always trying to uh, enact the love scenes that they need to draw, which then leads the one girl into catching feelings for the other girl. And uh, the, the current state of the manga, I think, is, is really funny, where they both are trying their best to confess, to sincerely confess, and the other is always assuming that the confession is being used for manga, and it's very, very silly. Very kind of self-indulgently silly. 
We got a bunch more candy. Have you ever had these? These are so good. This this brand puree um, that makes gummies in the shape of a heart and a wide variety of flavors. I highly recommend if you ever see these where you are to try them out. Every flavor I've had so far has been great. Really bold flavors. Uh, this mixed berry one I've never seen in Canada. Um, other ones I've been able to get at like the, the Chinese supermarket that's near here, but this one... No, so I had to stock up. So I got another bag. Yep. And then there's Puree Premium, uh, where it actually has like liquid juice inside. Very, very tasty. Slightly more expensive, um, but yeah, fantastic. These mandarin orange ones, it's surreal. You actually kind of think you're eating a piece of orange. Um, more. Or, oh, this one is grape. The grape is also fantastic. More, 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 and and more. And I bought a lot. And I already gave some of them away. So I bought even more than this. It's not going to be enough. I know already. It's not going to be enough. I got a bag of. Mandarin orange Kit Kats too. These are fantastic. Please seek them out wherever you can. I wish I got more. I think these are my favorite uh, flavor of Kit Kats. I already gave away one bag. That's my only bag now. It's not enough. We got a bag of these. Black Thunder. <clears throat> this is a fantastic candy bar. I recommend to anyone. It's just like a nice, good chocolate flavor. It's not the most mind-blowing thing ever. Brain Thunder! <clears throat> no. Black Thunder. Brain Thunder is the thing in ICAPS. Uh, then we got more of these. These are really good. Yeah, I don't know. I bought a lot of candy. And this is it, though. This, this bag is the last bag. So I'm not really sure what it is. It has, like, fruits and stuff in it. Fruits and berries and... I don't know. Chocolate and granola, it looks like. Um, I thought it seemed pretty tasty, and it was very cheap, so it's worth a try. All right, uh, that's it for candy. Uh, we did all that, at least. Uh, here's another Tuhu. I got Aya. Um, Aya, I've become a really big fan of ever since I read that Karage Toro Dojinshi Super Speed Starters. Um, it's pretty good. Comes with some fun stuff. It comes with the bizarre Yukari kind of Yukuri sort of face. Um, we probably won't be posing her with that. And her leaf, and her notebook, and her camera, and a little tornado attack, which is cool. And of course her big Tengu wings. Nice! Glad to get that. Um, oh, I got this. I didn't see very much Bloomin' to You merch overall. Um, there was a lot of promotion for it, though, which was exciting. There was a lot of things advertising the flu first Blu-ray was coming out soon. Um, which, you know, it would be fun to get all the Blu-rays, but that's really expensive. <laughs> Buying anime in Japan is actually so expensive. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so I didn't do that. It wasn't even out yet. Um, and they advertised the manga a lot. They would have little displays of all of the manga volumes, sometimes playing the show's soundtrack, which was cool. Um, but in terms of actual merchandise, this is the only thing I found, was these blind box uh, rubber trading stamps. So I was like, okay, I'll get one. I really want Koyomi. Come on. Koyomi. 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 No, it's not. It is... Um, Saike, Saike, Saiki, Saiki Senpai, the poor doomed girl. Well, that's fine. She's she's quite a good character. So I have to put it back in the box. Uh, I got this. This is a series that I've been reading that I think is really fun. Forehead Ninjas. So I was like, all right, sure. I'll buy the manga for this. It's, it's really cute and fun to read. Um, kind of hat. It's kind of hat, you know? I'm not sure why I thought it was okay to contaminate my bag with all this hat, but we did it. We did it for the foreheads. Forehead is so huge. How are they doing this? How is this guy's entire artistic career 
been born from the, the fact that he was willing to draw the forehead that large. What a work of genius to draw the forehead that large. Uh, I got this Iconic Hat. It is a Kimono Friends wall scroll that looked really cute. Um, and the, the people working at the booth were really, really excited about me buying it and, and did their best to speak to me in English. Um, it's just got all the friends. All of them. Well, not all of them. There's like a bajillion that haven't even been in the show. But it's got all the ones that were in the show. And some ones that weren't in the show, I'm pretty sure. Wow. Pretty good. I was so happy to see all the Kimono Friends merchandise. That, that show is like just a miracle among all miracles. Alright. Good. Good, good. What else? What else we got? I went to the Yuru Camp Cafe. Um, it was like a big crossover cafe. They had Zombie Land Saga stuff, and the Heavens Feel Fates Day Night movie stuff, and then Yuru Camp stuff, <laughs> all in the same cafe. I was like, all right, sure. It was like predominantly Yuru Camp though, like most of the, the decorations and settings were, and then they played episodes of Yuru Camp while we ate. It was, just, it was so lovely. Anyways, uh, if you ordered a drink, you got a coaster. I procced the Shimarine, which of course is the one I wanted more than anything. We did it. I got some other stuff from that too that we'll look at later. Uh, I got this. We were actually just talking about this in the last video. It showed up in uh, the the World of Yuri introduction video. And I was like, oh yeah, I'm pretty sure this is the one with uh, the lady that streams with the goat mask and then her classmate finds out. And I was right! And I guess I should have known because I bought it! <laughs> So this is a collection of her shorter work. Uh, that story with the streamer ended up being a full serialization. Um, so this has like the original chapters that led to that serialization and then just some other side stories and stuff. So pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, she's a pretty talented artist, I think. Really mature storytelling. I love it. I love it, I love it. Uh, running out of space to put stuff here. Um, I got this, Senko-san, Volume 1. Um, I actually bought all three volumes of Senko-san. Uh, but there was a decent amount of promotion of Senko-san because the, the anime is starting in April, so that's still a ways away. They're more excited to promote things that are happening this season or the immediately next season. Um, it was kind of interesting being there between seasons, you know, that the, the previous season's merch and such was still out in force, but they were kind of looking to the future. They were, they were starting to shift over to what is to come. Um, so yeah, Senko-san, if you're not reading this, you should check it out. It's, it's something else. Even if it doesn't really appeal to you, even if you learn the premise and you're like, yeah, no, that's not for me, which is totally reasonable, um, it's worth, like, just thinking about how much they perfected it. <laughs> um, like, that for the, the sort of person who really is into this sort of thing, how they got 0% wrong. Like, how they, they just knew immediately what must be done. It's amazing. It's like <laughs> um, a, a real staggering work of genius. Um, so but the, the group chat I'm in with, with like my IRL anime friends has become a Senko-san cult more than anything. Um, so, you know, I had to do it. I had to do it for the culture. For the Senko-san cult and or the Senko-san culture. <laughs> um, the, the funky Yuri beat continues. We got this on Blu-ray. It's the Kazai-san OVA. Special flower edition. Um, I think it comes with postcards, my friend said. Uh, I was pretty excited to buy this. I, I think the fact that Kazai-san got an OVA is really beautiful and wonderful. Um, just as much as Bloom Into You getting an, uh, an anime. Um, 
even though it was just an OVA, what blows my mind about this, and I, and I hope this isn't too much of a spoiler, is that the OVA starts after the end of the first volume. And again, minor spoiler, the, the characters get together at the end of the first volume. And, you know, the, the two girls getting together usually marks, like, the end of the Yuri series, which is often quite unfortunate, um, because people want drama and, and tension, and they want, you know, uncertainty, climax, resolution, all of that stuff. But then there's other people that just want to see a nice relationship, that just want to see the girl hang out with her girlfriend, and it's, you know, just nice things. This one is just all nice things. There's a bit of, uh, tension, you know, there's some sad parts and, and some parts of relief and such, but for the most part, it's just supposed to be really nice. It's, it's like a really wonderful kind of animated vacation. Okay, so that's a whole, just like a slip cover. I guess I'll keep that somewhere in some capacity. But I do like the, the super minimalism of this box. The front is just this really lovely watercolor-esque shot from the, the OVA, and the back is just pure white. Oh, 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 ah, what is the part? <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Comes with a special memorial CD, which I guess is probably like voice dramas. And then some postcards. Yay, let's look at the postcards. Nice, nice. Oh, fun. Nice, nice. Hanging out at the festival. Ooh, shining umbrella. Nice, nice. Lots of floral stuff around it. Uh, oh, Kaze-san lying in bed. Texting with Yamada. Very cute. Good, good. Got, oh, hanging out with uh, Miko Ichi. Oh, all oh, these two form like a story. All right, check this out. Check this out. So, Kaze-san gets this text, and it's like Yamada's face getting all squished up. And she's like, what? What the heck is this? Ha ha ha. And it's Mikoichi that sent it. Ah, oh, that's what's happening there. Ah. Ah. Ah, that's so nice. <laughs> Just the idea of that, that, that Yamada is having a sleepover with her best friend. And her best friend is sort of teasing her by sending embarrassing pictures of her to her girlfriend. Oh, that's so cute. That's so cute. That's so nice. All right. Good? That's all of them, I think. Yeah. All right. Very nice. Very nice. I'll put these away. Good, good. Oh, uh, no, oh, no, oh, no, no, leave a sticky residue, please. I'm trying to put them back in the bag that they came in, but the bag has like a sticky part to seal it shut, so trying to get them in the bag without getting stuck on the sticky part is proving to be, for now, an insurmountable task. We'll, we'll just worry about that later. Um, okay, put them there. So yeah, that's nice, that's nice. That's uh, a definite historical artifact proving that in 2018, Yuri finally won. The triumph of Yuri has been long coming and is now at hand. Uh, here's another one. This one is called A Hundred Scenes of Girls Love. And I think it's from a Twitter account that just posts these like short comics, most of them only one page, but I think with some recurring characters. And they're just little nice slice of life things, various cute little flirty things happening. It's nice. I hadn't heard of it before, um, but it looked good. And then I think I saw a sequel as well that was like the four seasons of Girls Love. Uh, so I'll have to check that out. Uh, what else I got? Oh, banger alert. Yeah, that's right. We got the um, interior of something place, uh, 
I thought that meant hot water, but maybe not. Kemuri uh, Rai line. It's the that place line. Something going east and then also going west. So this is what they call a train DVD. Um, this is something I've known about for a long time. And the previous times I've been in Japan, I've seen them here and there, usually for surprisingly expensive. And I've seen footage from them sometimes on, on YouTube and stuff. Uh, but not too, too often. It, it doesn't seem like there's a huge scene for kind of like piracy of these. So what a train DVD is, uh, is they pick one particular vehicle, one particular line, like one particular journey that it makes, and they just document the hell out of it. So I'm pretty sure there's going to be footage of the train, uh, like probably a lot of specifics on the engine and the operating procedure of it and things like that. And then there's going to be, I, I think usually like a total uncut, 100% uh, video recording of what the driver sees, like what the front of the train sees as it completes that journey. Um, and the, there's been something that has always really fascinated me. There's nothing inside. I was hoping there would be a little book or something, but I guess that's too much to ask. Uh, it's something that's always really fascinated me. Something that I've found really beautiful in a way. Um, just this celebration and this kind of documentation of something that uh, I think most people would see purely functionally. Um, that most people like, you know, when you're riding on the train, you might say, oh, that's like a really pu pretty view. Or, or you might have some sort of mechanical background and be like, oh man, the train's pretty cool. Like, uh, it's it's neat that it is powered this way or whatever. I don't know. Um, but that there's this other culture, this train otakuism culture that exists beyond that, that almost like wants to worship the trains. And, and this leads to phenomena like train spotting. Um, every time we rode the Shinkansen, there would be areas where I would see people standing out in fields, like taking pictures of the train, which is not an uncommon thing. There's people that go out and, and try to get photo documentation, kind of like bird watching. Um, where you try to spot rare trains in the wild, get nice shots of trains in different locations. Um, and then, yeah, this culture around train DVDs. So, as I said, I, I would see some of them sometimes. Um, and then I was in this bookstore um, that was in, in Akiba, but it wasn't like an anime bookstore exclusively. And they had an amazing train, like, floor. Uh, like, the the amount of train DVDs they had, and train magazines, and train doujinshi, like self-published materials that are just collections of people's photographs of trains, or collections of independent research and analysis and discussion of trains. Uh, there was lots of magazines that talked about, like, the hospitality of trains, one that had, like, a compilation of menus of food served on trains. There was another smaller section that had a lot of the same stuff about, like, airplanes, too, like commercial airplane flights. It's just mind-blowing. The, the fact that all of this stuff exists out there. I don't know. I, we'll probably go into more detail later in some other video. Um, but, yeah. So I picked up a very cheap train DVD. They, they had, like, a discount section. And I was like, I want one of these. Like, I just want to know what it's like to actually sit down and watch one of these in the way that a train otaku presumably would. Uh, so we got this one. I picked it out because it looks very pretty, the journey that it goes on, and yet I wouldn't say it's like a very like sexy train. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Like it's it's just like a very standard commuter train. Um, and the fact that even these routes, which just go between two cities that I've never heard of somewhere in Japan, I can't really tell, um, is is so cool. Like, ah, oh, that's so cool. Oh, I just love. It. I just love. It. All right, so we got that train. Um, I got this, uh, Ayame to Amari Amane, um, a really, really bizarre manga. I'm not sure if it's still being produced. It's by Daoman Seiman, a legendary mangaka who makes exclusively really weird things. Um, I don't know. I can't describe it. You gotta check it out. <laughs> or, or don't. You don't actually gotta check it out, but... You won't regret it if you do. 
Um, what else I got? Got this Nendo. This is our non Toho Nendo. <laughs> Rare enough. It's uh, Mackie from Love Live in her training outfit, which I think is an extremely cool outfit. Oh my god, look at that. The, the hat, like the toque, the, the hoodie, the skirt, the what it, black and green leggings, like everything. Everything about this outfit is amazing. And the poses are amazing. The winging pose. The fact that she can put her hand in the, the hoodie. Like what? This is brilliant. How are they going to do that? What what technology enables that? We'll have to check it out. We'll have to find out. Uh, what else we got? I got the first volume of Bochi. Again, just kind of this feeling of wanting to buy one volume from a bunch of different series. Which is not typically how I buy manga, but it just seemed like a lot of fun. And then, you know, it's enough to remind me. It's enough that I look at it on the shelf and I'm like, oh yeah, Bochi. This is something that exists. They really went out and drew this wonderful manga about a girl making friends with everyone in her class. Oh, I love it. I can't wait for the anime. I think the anime has big, 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 big potential. Like, A-O-T-Y potential. Well, maybe not that far, but... Uh, what else we got? This is Reets! <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure this is the only volume of Reets because they couldn't keep doing it without tearing a hole in reality. Uh, so this is about the woman who made Saki, the creator of Saki, has a Mahjong manga about herself, uh, usually dealing with things around the production of Saki and the Saki anime and stuff. So in, in one big arc, well, big arc, you know, it's a pretty short manga, um, they're having a battle between various famous VAs to see who can play Saki in the anime. Um, that's great. <laughs> that's just so great. Um, and it is still like a legit, legit Mahjong manga insofar as that it's uh, the author who did The Legend of Koizumi, an absolutely legendary Mahjong manga. The, you know, that's the one where they go and fight Hitler on the moon with Mahjong. <laughs> um, that, that classic. So he really knows how to do a crazy over-the-top Mahjong battle sequence. Um, yeah, highly recommended. Lots of fun. Great art. Great Mahjong. Uh, in stores now, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it just felt like the thing to say. Uh, oh boy, what else we got? Uh, I got this. This is a guidebook to Sangatsu no Lion. Um, so it's got like character profiles and, and short little gag manga that look quite interesting. I just saw something I couldn't even explain. It looks like it's got a lot of um, kind of anthology illustrations and fan illustrations mixed in. Um, it's got stuff about the locale. They've got this like little photo shoot where they go to scenes, like the reference points for scenes in the manga, because um, it's all fairly realistic in its depiction of this city. Uh, it's got a breakdown of all the food they eat. Oh, it's the scene where he just needs cake. Do you remember? Do you remember what one's like? What does what's that guy's name? Kuma Toro or something? Kuma Goro. Um, just eating cake. Oh, I love it. Oh man, I love Sangatsu no Lion. Um, if you've watched my videos on anime, you've, you've heard me praise it before, I'm sure. So I was happy to get some amount of Sangatsu no Lion stuff. It, it just, it like broke my heart, you know, to see advertisements and stuff for the new volume. Um, I'm not sure if the manga is being scanlated or not. I've only just been watching the anime, but I, I'd like to read the manga too. The manga looks absolutely gorgeous. And to know that it's like a, a cultural force there, you know, like it's a, it's an actual presence um, that I think has like a, a generally like older and like less otaku-y fan base than most of the stuff I'm into. Um, and, and the idea that like, I don't know, there could be like a water cooler conversation about like, oh man, you read the latest chapter of Sangatsu no Lion. Like, yeah, it was beautiful. Like, oh, oh, I, I really like the shogi parts. I'm, I'm actually, a, this is a conversation. It's a conversation that could be happening in Japan. And this is the biggest injustice of all. 
Yes, that's right. I'm describing what I just called <laughs> this, this phenomenon of people in Japan talking about the series is an injustice. Um, uh, let's like shade it thought. Oh yeah, so they had an ad for the latest volume that I'm pretty sure was animated by Shaft and had like the original VAs from the Shaft anime, but it was showing scenes from the latest volume. And it was like, uh, this, I didn't get to watch that. I didn't even know that existed. Uh, how am I ever going to get to watch that? Like, you know, more subtitles so that I can understand what's happening better. Um, like, did, did, did they do this for other volumes? Are there a lot of these that I don't know about? Has there been a bunch of animated Sangatsu no Lion that I, that I will just never get to watch? It's difficult. It's frustrating, you know, to feel like you're really into this hobby. Of course, really into this hobby. I'm just looking at this pile of stuff, but there's like a gap, and it's not a small gap too. It's the Pacific Ocean <laughs> that's like keeping you from from like the the largest possible experience of this culture. But I don't know. I mean, I still got to go there. It's still pretty sweet. I shouldn't complain. Uh, I got this. It's a little Asobion. I got it from a capsule machine. It's cute. Asobion being, of course. The fictional universe kind of equivalent to Doraemon and Dead Dead Demons D -D -D Destruction by Inio Asano. It was great. Plus. <laughs> um, what else we got? I got the first volume of My Ball. Again, you might be like, why'd you buy all this manga? But manga is so cheap there. Like, I don't think I can overstate uh, how difficult it is. To be like, no, I don't want to buy it when it's like 240 yen and you love this series and the first volume has so many great moments and now you get to look at it whenever you want. Yay! I hope they localize this. I hope they make an anime of this. I hope something good happens for it because I don't understand how it isn't five or six times as popular as it is. It's just a great sports manga with lots of great characters. And, and, like, legitimate soccer action. Like, I think if you're into soccer, you would enjoy this show, right? Right? I don't know. I'm not into soccer, so I can't answer that question. Uh, what else we got? Um, got this little flan keychain thing from the capsule machine. I thought that was a pretty good pull. Speaking of flan, I got this. The Remillion Nendo. So, there's a bit of a story here. Uh, me and my friend, well, me and two of my friends actually, were in full-on Nendo hunting mode. We'll talk more about what that's like later. But hunting Nendos, in a nutshell, is sort of like if you worked as a day trader on, like, the New York Stock Exchange. But instead of the New York Stock Exchange being, like, one building or, like, one website... It was a whole bunch of little stores <laughs> dotted around the city uh, that you had to keep running around and looking through um, in order to figure out if you should buy or sell. Um, so yeah, Nendo hunting, pretty intense. And me and my friend are number one on both of our lists, on, on our hit lists, was Rumelia. Um, because we both had Flandra, Flander Nendos. Uh, I had my Flander for like a long time. Um, I just never had the opportunity to buy Remilia, and my friend had bought Flander earlier on the trip and really wanted to get both Flan and Remilia. So we looked all over uh, Akiba in Tokyo. No luck, no luck. Um, disappointment at every turn. And then I went down to Osaka. This was after me and my friend split up. And like pretty soon after I got to Osaka, we went to Mandarake. Boom! Sitting right there on the shelf, I immediately spotted my vampire girl, Remilia. Um, but you know, Mandarake, it's a floor with like eight floors, um, a store with like eight floors. We wanted to check out the rest of the building. It's also like an extremely compact, small space. Um, so it was like, all right, well, there's no need to buy this now and carry around the bag. Uh, so we, we went up, we spent maybe like an hour looking at other stuff. I bought some other stuff, came back down. It was gone. <laughs> of course it was gone. It was such a good price. It was such a rare Nendo. So I was distraught, you know, I was like, I can't believe it, I should have just bought it then. It, it was just so silly. I had already taunted to my friend, I was like, oh, guess what I got, guess what I got. 
Um, but then, you know, obviously, because I'm holding it, later that very day, we were in another store and I found another one. Um, it was crazy. We had never seen one in Tokyo and then we had found two in Osaka um, in the same day. I don't know, I got it, but I still felt bad because it's like, well, you know, I would have gone to the store anyways. And then I could have had one for me and one for my friend. I did find another one! <laughs> so we found three in Osaka. Um, so I was able to get one for my friend, too. Yay! So we got two of these. That's pretty good. Um, oh man, said friend was actually at my house yesterday. I forgot to give him his. Well, I guess it's good, because then I can show both. I can show you the combined strength of both. Uh, <sighs> Uh, I got this. This came with the Kantoku 15th anniversary book. It's a signboard. Wow, actually signed by Kantoku himself. No, it's just mass produced. But, oh yeah, you can see, there's a good example. Look, look at the way he draws fabric. That's, that's unreal. How does he do it? Just how? Riddle me that. Riddle me how. Uh, I got Liz and the Bluebird. On DVD, this is some sort of special edition. I just thought the cover was so gorgeous. I, I had to get the super limited edition one. Um, even though, you know, we've already talked about how expensive it is to buy anime in Japan. Just don't worry about it. Uh, I'm not sure what this comes with. We'll have to check it out. I love this movie. I, I don't know. Believe, believe me, you're going to hear about it later. You're going to hear a lot about this movie at some point. Uh, so we don't need to get into how much I love this movie just yet. Ooh, ooh, it's pretty cool. So this is the outside box. It's this really lovely cover. So minimal. And then it comes with this program looking thing. Um, now if you've used a lot of musical scores, the, the sort of way this is bound is very, very familiar to me. Is this a script? Holy, what? Mizore. Nai. Yeah, this is the entire script. So that kind of makes sense that it feels like sheet music, that it feels like a score that they would print. Um, yeah, and I think it's... Well, maybe this is the way that the Japanese scripts are normally laid out. But there's, like, timing information at the top, I think? Or no, it's just like a list. It's just a list of... Yeah, it's not ever differently timed. But it's got, like, stage directions and stuff, too. Ah, nah, we can't even get into it. And then it talks about... So here, I think... So these bar references, that is the actual score of the actual piece that they're playing in the song. And then it's showing for those bars, like at bar 108 to, or bar 148, um, you're going to show these things happening. So it's it's like, you know, zoom in on Misere, zoom in on Nozomi. That's so cool. That's so cool. All right. <laughs> that alone. That alone. Makes me pretty happy. Then we got more. This really wonderful inside cover. Oh my god. Oh my god. And then on the back they have this. If you watch the movie, you, you'll probably remember this part. Probably. I don't know. It really stuck out to me. It really stuck out to me that I was like, you know, the whole time I had been thinking about this idea of like impressionism. Um, the, the impressionism that, that KyoAni uses with Hibike. Um, and then when they cut to that, I was like, yes, yes, I was right, yes, <laughs> this is what they're doing. Um, I, again, we'll, we'll get into it more. This book is really lovely. It's got, like, character art and stuff. It's got an interview. It's got rough key visuals. It's got timing sheets for storyboarding. It's got 
this really wonderful score that again this idea of like impressionism oh man oh lordy lordy and it's got a big credit section at the back that's actually really nice that they put the full credits in static form here um so you can kind of view them more at your leisure again reminding me of like a concert program or maybe that's standard for dvds <laughs> i don't know I, i'm not i'm never sure like what i should praise something like this for um, because I don't really buy, like, a Western movie on DVD very often, so I, I don't really know, like, what <laughs> what's normally there, but whatever. Um, I'm, I'm very, very happy with this. Very, very, very happy with this. Mm. Man. Yuri, like... 2018. Yuri just won. This is over. Like, it's almost an anti-climax. That after all of the, these years of struggling, after all these years of back and forth, that it's just like, in one year, it's just like, nope. Yuri wins. It's over. Uh, here's more Yuri winning. I got the first volume of Prism. The only volume of Prism. This is back in the more struggling years. But this is a series I've always really liked. Um, it's by a very controversial author, Higashiyama Sho. Um, but this story, in isolation, I, I think shouldn't elicit much controversy. It's just a really nice story. A little unconventional. Uh, it's, it's a little more assertive in, in various ways than a lot of other Yuri, especially of its era. But it's great. It's great. I'm surprised I didn't have it already, honestly. Um, <clears throat> uh, here's more. This one is Girl's Planet. It's a collection of short stories. Um, there's one in here. I think. I think it's the one I'm thinking of that I really liked when I read the scanlation of it. Let's flip through quick and see if we can try to find it. Like, the artist seems really familiar. I'm pretty sure I've read some of their stuff. And, oh, wait, am I thinking of Girls Planetary Yum? I think maybe I got mixed up, and there's a story I really liked called Girls Planetarium. Well, anyways, this looks interesting, too. So, you know, we'll check that out. Um, this was something I got at the Yuru Camp Cafe. It's a giant clear file. Um, you can see there. The, the Collaboration Cafe. Clearfile itself is quite nice, but I also bought it because I needed a way to transport other things I got at the cafe, namely these placemats uh, for every kind of entree type thing. You got a placemat, randomly chosen. Again, I proxed Shimarine. I did it twice. I did it on the placemat and on the coaster. That's what they call the quality of a god. I don't know what I'm talking about. And I got... Her friends, whose name escapes me, that has the dog, Chikawa, I remember the dog's name. But I really like this character too, I really like her dynamic with Shimarine. Um, and then also in here I put the flyer for the uh, Inyo Asano gallery thing, <clears throat> which was great, which I'm going to probably make a standalone video just talking about and showing pictures from. Uh, uh the pile of stuff is getting terrifying. <laughs> uh, I also got this clear file for buying something at a convenience store. It's Conan. He's all dressed up in ancient clothing. I don't know. <laughs> I don't really watch Conan, so I don't understand it. Uh, I'm not sure what I'll do with that. I have a friend who likes Conan, so maybe I'll give it to her. Uh, this is uh, volume one of um, that which is like the dust that constitutes my world, also known as The Feelings We All Must Endure, a really fantastic Yuri series um, talking about a group of university girls and all of their suffering and their much, much angst. Um, 
I bought again the, just the first volume as kind of a symbolic gesture. Um, <laughs> this, this is like an exercise uh, that the author gave the readers early on. Here, draw what you think the relationships are. There's six main characters. Try to guess <laughs> how they're all going to end up. Um, so yeah, I bought the first volume, but really, this series is made for me in the, the last volume. The last volume has one of my favorite moments in all of manga. Um, which maybe if you've read it, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But maybe not, I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like, it feels very personal. It feels like, um, maybe not everyone can relate to the this, ex this line, but for those that can, Oh boy, um, we're, we're kind of getting near the end here. I got some Karage Toro Toto Dojinshi for 100 yen. Why would they list this at 100 yen? You know, it's like, I look and I look for, for Dojinshi. Hunting for Dojinshi is like a whole other thing that we'll have to talk about. It's pretty crazy. Um, and, you know, I often don't find what I'm looking for. And I'm like, well, of course I can't find it, because this is awesome stuff, and, like, everybody wants it, so why would I think it would be, end up, like, still out here on the shelves? And then you, you find something like this for 100 yen? And you're like, no, 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 it's the opposite problem. I've been overrating the Japanese taste. They don't know what's up. Putting this out for 100 yen. Oh, oh this is a masterpiece. And it's not like Karagatoro isn't popular. He has a serialized manga now. I think he has two serialized manga going right now. So I'm not sure why... I'm finding these for 100 yen, and they're not in, like, a museum somewhere. Oh, oh, this crazy, but I, I got another one, too. This one's great. Are they making the curry? This one's so much fun. Look, look at this. Wait, where is it? Wait, I lost it. Uh, I just saw it. Yeah, look, look. Look at this drawing of Flander. This drawing of Flander alone is worth 100 yen. If it was just a book that contained that drawing, and you put it out for 100 yen, you'd be a fool not to buy it. A fool. So, Japan, I'm calling all of Japan out. Another one. 300 yen I spent on Kragetaro Dojins. This one, of course, about the Kotatsu. The curse of the Kotatsu. Fantastic. Oh, fantastic. My, my collection grows. I'm getting close to having all of the, the Karage Toro Toho Dojinshi that has been scan -lated. But I don't really know what percentage of all of his Dojinshi that is, uh, even is. It's the scary thing, you know. Being in Japan, it really makes you confront the fact that you're at like 1% of 1%. That like if you think about all the stuff that's been scan -lated, it would be generous to think you've read even 1% of it. And then, if you think of all of the comics that are being published or self-published in Japan, 1% seems not even close uh, to describing the amount that's been scan -lated. So you're not even at 1% of 1%. <laughs> um, here's another one. I don't think this is being scan uh, This is a manga by Inyo Asano. I have no idea what it's about. It was just being sold and advertised everywhere, and it looks great. It looks like I'm gonna read it and get the big sad. Uh oh, JK, I'm not gonna read it. Look at all this text! <laughs> you think I can read that? Where's the Furigata? How do you pronounce this? Um... Okay, well I can actually understand a bit of that. Anyways, this looks quite interesting. Uh, of the three Asano series that I haven't read any of, um, the other two I was like vaguely aware it existed, but this one, I just had no idea. This one looks crazy! What am I even looking at here? Okay, alright, no more spoilers. No more just flipping through manga you haven't read. It's a very dumb idea. <laughs> um, I got this, uh, Mountain Kukuichi. Um, a very strange Yuri artist that is now doing a really shockingly normal, at least of the, the parts that I've seen, baseball manga. Um, but their Yuri stuff was really strange and really interesting. Um, I wouldn't call it, like, fetishy. It's not that kind of strange. 
and yet it has like the idiosyncrasies and stuff of of like it's like that kind of like energy you know what i mean of like wait why are they doing this like who is this for wow there's a lot of plastic there's like four layers of plastic on this um so there's like one where the girl is dating another girl and then she just has this like existential crisis and she becomes obsessed with the fact that she's gonna die um and they she calls her up and they have like a conversation about it there's one where they they try to like hold hands the entire day um and it and it's like oh that's so cute and romantic but like it's not it just like focuses on like how inconvenient it is and all of these like kind of small problems that arise <laughs> It's like really strange, um, but I always found their stuff really interesting, and the art is really nice. Um, like, look, I don't really remember what this one is exactly, but the first thing I opened is just like her crying, <laughs> and, like comforting the other girl. It's like it's, I I don't know, I don't get it. I don't I just I just don't get it. I think that's what it comes down to. Um, but yeah, it's pretty interesting. Uh, I vaguely remember these. I guess I should reread some Mountain Pukuichi. Sure. Uh, we got this. Hidamari Sketch. Sai and Hero. Blu-ray. Sai and Hero graduation arc. I don't know why I just decided to say Blu-ray in the middle of that sentence. It's the Sai and Hero graduation arc. Presented on Blu-ray. So this was an OVA made after the end of the last season of Honeycomb. And so far this is the last Hidamari merch, or no, Hidamari anime that they're, they're going to make. And I think that they'll ever make. Um, because the voice actress who played uh, Yoshinoya Sensei, their teacher, who appears in like almost every episode, um... I think is dead, or she was at least very, very ill for quite a while. Um, like cancer or something. Wow, what a sad way to end this episode. <laughs> um, something like that. So I would be pretty surprised if they came back and did more of the show without her. And also, as this implies, this is the Cyan Hero graduation arc, and you can see on the cover, there they are with their diplomas. They graduate, and then after this in the manga, they're not around very much anymore. It's focusing on the girls that are still there, and the new girl that moves in. Um, so, I don't know, I think this is probably the last Titamari anime that we'll ever get to watch. Which is sad, but... Oh man, what an ending. This is definitely my favorite piece of animated media ever. Um, you can't just go in and watch it raw, though. You, you have to watch all four seasons before that, otherwise the, the emotional intensity is nowhere near. Um, this, of course, is their, their diplomas. They give you both characters diplomas um, and a nice postcard. And a little booklet. And the booklet's got all sorts of drawings and notes from the staff, and that's all very, very beautiful. Um, but I'll, I, I'm sure I would be even more emotional about all of this, um, except that I bought this mostly as like a companion to something I already have. Mm -hmm. Hold on. Which is the production notes for the the graduation arc. So I I already now I have both. Yay! <laughs> uh, this is like one of my favorite things that I own, hands down. I, I think this is like. Oh, this is like a really, really, really beautiful thing that exists. I love it. We can talk about it more in some other video. I talked about it a lot in the video where I put it on my bookshelves. Oh. Anyways, that would have been a good finale, I guess, to talk about this. There's one more thing. No, there's two more things.
There's another volume of Senko-san. This is volume two. It's great. There's gonna be like a religion around this series, I'm sure. So, if you ever wanted to get on the ground floor of a religion, you should check out the Cult of Senko-san. And the last thing we'll talk about is... Oh, excuse me, Yo Moon Android. Um, again, just trying to get all of the Toho, Nen excuse me, Toho Androids that I didn't have before. I'm getting there. Who am I missing? Alice. I don't have Alice, which is surprising because I quite like Alice. I don't have Yukari. I don't have Suntan Cierno. I don't have. Uh, what's her face? Sunflower Girl. I don't have um, Eyeball Girl. <laughs> Con Con Paku or something. I don't know. Anyways, but now I have Yomu. She comes with both her sword and her short sword, um, both in scabbard form and non-scabbard. Um, and her her ghost buddy. <laughs> no, not her buddy. It's like her. It's also her. All right. So that's it. That's the pile. Yep. Pretty good. Pretty good haul. That's not it. That's actually not it. <laughs> that's... That's not it. And, and it's not just because I've strategically not shown you five things. Five things that I will uncover in the next video entitled my five biggest treasures from Japan. No, 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 no. It's also not it, because right now, on a boat, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, there is three boxes <laughs> full of other stuff uh, that me and my friends that I traveled with bought. Uh, we were buying, this was actually the plan from the start, so it wasn't just like, oh my god, like we've overwhelmed ourselves with purchases, um, but that from the start we had decided, alright, after Comicat, and after, like, the first few days of going to Akiba, uh, we're just going to ship everything we have at that point home. So we did that. So keep a lookout for the craziest unboxing video of all time uh, coming out, I don't know, probably in a, a couple months uh, when we receive the boxes full of dreams on route from Japan. All right, but that's, that's all for now. Um... Aside from this top five video that we'll get to later. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. It's a lot of stuff. Yep. Okay. Bye bye.